felt slightly worried watching the recent films of Nani that included V and Tuck Jagdish, where an actor delivers great performances and then gets in the cyclical process of forgettable commercial ventures, it's a tough pill to swallow especially for audiences that love the actor and his craft. I deeply regret not watching his film titled Sham Singha Roy in theatres as I just finished it on Netflix just a few minutes ago. There are several reasons for the same but let me get to the movie straight away. Vasudev, played by Nani, is an aspiring filmmaker who is casting the female lead for his film. This would be a gateway for producers to approve him as a director for his own feature film. When he is successful in his career, he is accused of plagiarism as his story seem identical to an individual known as Sham Singha Roy. How slowly and steadily the concept of reincarnation gets uncovered only for Vasu to retrace the path that was once led in another life as the writer and revolutionary Sham Singha Roy. And his eternal love for Rosie, played by Sai Pallavi, this forms the basic storyline of this film. I'm not going to go overboard with just praising the film but want to be extremely honest on what I think will stick out like a sore thumb while you watch this movie and why holistically it is still a movie experience that was extremely memorable for me. So here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of the movie so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch it on Netflix or not. The Underwhelming Aspects Easy Solutions and Montage Mode The editing of this film is such that when it follows and retraces the journey of both Vasu and Sham respectively, it relies on montage sequences. So whether it is Vasu's short film being completed, him getting greenlit for a feature film, or Sham wanting to work in West Bengal, getting published and his book being a roaring success. All of these milestones are presented in such a fast manner that it never really fleshes out what is the content that is being published. Other than his take on the regressive practice of the Devadasis, he seems like a revolutionary, hints of the Naxalite movement are apparent, but it is mostly vague and does not get into specifics. He is presented in the film as a voice that many people are gravitating towards, a take presented apparently that questions the very establishment and customs that have been followed for generations, but never really expands on exactly what he is saying. While watching the film, you will realize that many of these milestones are tough to achieve in real life, but for the storyline to move forward, the creators take a simple approach with its screenplay where massive feats are achieved quite easily and fast. Politics This is not necessarily an underwhelming aspect of the film, but a cautionary tale for all of you who might decide to watch this movie on Netflix. The politics that is communicated in this movie is loud and clear. It presents many Devadasis in a temple serving a man with a red tilak. They do all favours one can think of and the man at the helm of affairs is pure evil. The Hindu pundits are portrayed as regressive individuals who are staunch believers in the dated caste system. The lead hero also has an opposing take on the Rig Ved. The Naxalite movement and its presence in West Bengal is made clear the lead character being a strong proponent for the same in the film. Are these aspects completely overwhelming to the point where it absolutely disconnects you from the film storyline and the performances of Nani and Sai Pallavi? Not at all. But trust me, if this movie had released in Hindi, you would see several boycott campaigns slinging Bollywood, the lead actor and its anti-Hindu elements on social media. We just seem to be more discerning when it comes to cinema from other languages in the country, but love to throw mud on the slightest references in a Hindi movie. Let me know what you think regarding the same. The Good Music and Choreography The music in this film is absolutely enchanting, making me come to the conclusion that it is one of the reasons for its quality to elevate. Nikki J. Mayer has done a phenomenal job and never in the slightest did I think that the music in this film abruptly halted the screenplay of this movie. More than that, it enhanced it in such a proficient fashion. The rise of Sham Singha Roy comes in and out throughout the film and really made me think that it would have been such an amazing experience to listen to the soundtrack in a cinema hall. The two songs that feature Sai Pal are the standout songs and sung beautifully by Anurag Kulkarni. Honestly, his voice is breathtaking, especially the portions of the rag that he sings as Sai Pallavi dances in red. I can't say enough about Sai Pallavi. I mean, where do I even start? She has to be one of the most graceful dancers we have in the film industry across several languages. She will truly grasp your attention as she, with such ease, performs in red. She is emotive, subtle, yet so powerful. I could not say enough to do justice to her dance performance in this movie, but she is literally like what Bruce Lee says. She is like water. She takes the shape of any genre of dance you can put her to and she assimilates beautifully. Cinematography Sanujan Vargas does it again and it is his breathtaking visuals that are another plus point with this movie. Sorry if I am repeating myself but my god did I miss out on watching this movie in the theatre because it is a visual spectacle. Especially the way he has shot the choreography and captured the essence and old world charm of West Bengal. Be it the dilapidated buildings, the narrow lanes, the sepia-like tone to transport us to a different era, the film is undoubtedly a visual treat. 
a dedication to Satyajit Ray and West Bengal. The ode to Satyajit Ray is loud and clear through this film. Especially if you are a Satyajit Ray fanboy, you will have a keen eye for the several references throughout the film. Vasu and his collection of posters and Ray's book, seeing Mahapurush being showcased to a crowd where Santosh Datta is talking about the elusive nature of the present, or the one that sticks out the most for me is the transition shot of Sharmila Tagore in the 1960 film Devi being recreated with Sai Pallavi's character. True film fans will totally connect with several of these sequences. Bez Bengal again through the cinematography and the keen eye for detail when it comes to Rahul as the director, his vision seems like a genuine attempt at capturing the essence of the state rather than portray the lowest common denominator which mostly translates into coming across as caricatures. Performances. I can't really go out of my way to say much about Kriti Shetty's role as she is proficient but does not have a lot of meat in her role to work with. She assists the film well, but the only reason, yes, the only reason, okay, I might be exaggerating. This film really works because of the performances by Nani and Sai Pallavi. Nani especially in the portions of West Bengal shines. The call back to him telling someone she is a natural star, I smirk because this man really has a presence which is unique and no wonder so many fans connect with him. Even in the Bengali dialogue in the film I never thought that there was an effort by the actor it almost seems seamless transitioning from telugu to bengali within seconds he really has put forth such an impressive performance sai pallavi as rosie it's almost as if the role has been written with her in mind she embodies such elegance and warmth in all of her roles and she exudes the same through this film as well the chemistry really is organic and i really thought that at one point of time that the romantic genre is dead in this country just because of the dearth of films we get in the last few years but through this film it reinstated the same hope within me that this genre and the unexplainable bond between two fictional characters on screen is not going anywhere anytime soon and that was a video guys write down in the comments below what you thought about the movie please don't forget to follow me on instagram the handle is right in front of you follow me at jammy pants4 also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead thank you for watching